Hello, I'd like to show you how to set up new tenants within the Abbey Flex Capture software. This is a, gives us the ability to kind of segregate different projects and roles and users, files and images and things like that within the software, giving some protection so that certain departments or other even organizations can't see information and projects and data from other people. It gives us the ability to create tenants and kind of just like in the real world we have different apartment buildings that have multiple tenants and those tenants you know don't have access to each other's apartments it's the same way within the software and I want to show that to you real quick within the software what happens is an administrator of the software goes into our administration and monitoring console by clicking the settings screen they have the ability to create what we call a tenant now we can click this new tenant button, but we're not going to do that quite yet. The first thing that we have to make sure is set up, and this is very, very important, is we need to make sure we have our email settings set up, our SMTP settings. This is very important because what happens is when we set up a new tenant, certain administrators emails get triggered and that gives them access to the software so that they can control different portions of their projects, etc. So this will create, the very first thing we do when we create a tenant is the software will create a tenant administrator and then that administrator will have the ability to kind of manage that whole tenant across the board so this is very important we must have our smtp information set up first the next thing we will do is actually create the tenant and in this case we're just going to call this our first tenant and we can give it a description and this is the part that i was telling you about this administrator email if we don't have the smtp settings set up this will be a problem but since we do in our demo uh, we're ready to go so what i'm going to do is just simply type in my email here and you can see we have some additional settings here that are very important as well in my case i'm going to share a main license however we do have the ability to segregate licenses per tenant and therefore manage page counts and permissions and quantities of of documents and images separately per tenant so once i'm done i'm going to hit save and the software will create a tenant for us now what it's also doing behind the scenes is it's triggering an email to that administrator email that we set up when we did the tenant and that email will look something like this and as you can see this email just contains some very basic basic information for that administrator it includes their login and a temporary password which when the first time they log into the software they will change uh, so what I'm going to do is now kind of explain to you how the tenant accesses the software. Well, of course, they can click the link here that will allow them to log in. Also, the software uh, within the grid when we set up tenants gives you a quick reference there that you can log in. So I'm going to hit that reference. And what I will do is, uh, is just simply type in the information that I have in my email. I have that on the other screen. But remember, this is the tenant administrator. Oops, excuse me. And I'm going to type the temporary password. And you'll notice the very first thing that happens when I log in is I have to now set up a new password. So I'm going to give my old password there. I'm going to give it my first name and last name. And then I'm just going to set up the password. In our case, I'll just leave the password tenant1. And we'll make sure we repeat that as well. So once I've reset the password, you can see the different stations that this administrator has access to. So remember, now this administrator is managing their own tenant. This is not the same as the original system administrator that set up the tenant. Now this is just simply the, the administrator of just that arm of the software. So if we go into the administration and monitoring console, under the tenant, you will see that one, there's a different URL for the tenant than what the system administrator uses. It includes the tenant name, and secondly certain settings now there are limited settings here so they don't get access and control the software a hundred percent across the board instead they're just controlling their piece of the pie and you can see they can manage different projects different users groups and then requests which are simply just uh, user users wanting access to different parts of the software under their tenant so now that we have a tenant set up we have the ability to upload documents to uh, certain parts of the software under just that tenant. So if we want to upload uh, documents or projects um, to the tenant so that just that tenant has access to, we can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, just a sample demo project that we have, and I'm going to show you the two differences here. 
and this is a local machine, so this would be obviously your server information or your IP information. If I type in localhost, that is the overall system. That is not segregated by tenant. And you can see the authentication will just simply use my default there. I do have the ability to tell the software to go look for just the tenant arm that I'm looking for. And of course, if you remember, this is going to be my tenant administrator account and password. And now I can upload this project to the server. And now if I go back and I refresh our projects here, you'll see now just this tenant will have access to uh, that project. And also, of course, the users under that tenant will as well. So that will give you and shows you the ability and how tenants are managed within the software. And it's all done using a tenant administrator who eventually has access to the software and can admit different people to have access to it. And then we use different URLs within the software and of course different logins because of that, that kind of just navigates where users and what tenants are being affected as they navigate through it. So a very nice and simple way, once you understand how to control tenants, gives you the ability to just make sure things are secure and, and secularized uh, uh, appropriately. So I hope you enjoyed this video. There are a lot of benefits to, to using tenants within uh, organizations, within businesses. And if you have any questions on it, please reach out to us. We would love to be of assistance to you. Thank you so much.